Howdy gang and welcome to your 11th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about ranges. Okay then, so what does a range do? Well, in Python a range basically generates a list of numbers for us, which we can then use to iterate over with for loops. So in previous examples, when we've looked at for loops, we've done something like this. We've created some data, some kind of collection, items, and then we've looped through those using a for loop to say, okay, well, for singular in plural in this collection. And this singular variable right here can be whatever you want it to be called, but it refers to whatever item we're currently looping through in that particular collection, that list. Then we're going to do something with each iteration round. So in this example, I want to, again, stick with for loops, but this time we're going to use a for loop with a range instead of this data. So let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. And what we're going to say is for n in range, and then we're going to pop a number in here, and then we're going to do something. So do something right here. Now what this range does, remember, is just generate basically a list of numbers from 0 to whatever number we specify right here, in this case 5, but it's non-inclusive of 5. So what this is going to do then is loop through this for loop from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but not 5. Okay, so in total it's 5 times because it includes that 0. So let's try this. Let's print out n each time around. So save and let's run this. It's called ranges.py, so python ranges.py and we see those numbers printed back to us, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, cool. So basically that's what a range allows us to do with a for loop. Now when we only specify one argument in here, we're saying we want to go up to that point but not including it, and automatically that range is going to start at 0. But what we can do is specify our own starting point if we wanted to, which I'm going to do now. So let me copy this dude and comment it out. I'm going to paste it down below, and this time what I'm going to do is go from 3 up to 10. So the first argument right here, that is the starting point, and it's inclusive of that 3. The second argument is the end point, non-inclusive of that number. So again, we're going to do the same thing, just print n and see what happens. So now we get from 3 to 9, remember, non-inclusive of 10. Cool, let me just clear this, give us a bit of room. Now, what we can do as well is also add on a third argument. And this third argument is a step size, if you like. In what step do you want to go up or cycle through this range? The default is 1 because we're just going round every time, going up 1 and printing out n, which is increasing by 1 each time around. But what we can do, and I'm going to copy this to demonstrate it and then comment it out, paste it down here. We can specify a third parameter here, which is saying, OK, well, instead of going up in ones, I want to go up in say fours. And I'm going to start this at zero again, and this time we'll go to 20. So we're going from zero to 20, and we're going up in steps of four. So let's see what happens. We'll print n out each time around. Oops, not clear. Uh, Python ranges. So now you can see we're starting at zero, going up to four, eight, 12, 16, in steps of four all the way, but not inclusive of up to 20, okay? So they're the basics of ranges. Now we can also use ranges with data if we wanted to. So I'll go through another example. This time I'm going to create a list and this is going to be called burgers and I'll just set this equal to like a, a few different strings which are going to be the types of burgers. So beef first of all, uh, then chicken, we'll also do a veg one and we'll do a supreme, a lot of places have supreme burgers and also a double, why not? All right, cool. So now we have our different types of burgers. And what we're going to do is use a range to kind of loop through these burgers. So again, we'll say 4n in range. Now remember, when we only specify one argument, then the range defaults by going from 0 up to that number that we specify. Now, what if we don't necessarily know how many items are in this list? And we don't know what to go up to or how many times to cycle through. Well, what we can do is find out the length of that list by using the len function. So I could say I want to go up to len of burgers. So now, since there's five elements in here, len burgers is going to equal five. One, two, three, four, five. And remember, it's not inclusive of that five, which is cool because it goes from position zero, one, two, three, four, right? So we're going to cycle through this range and we're going to print out, first of all, n, then a comma, then burgers, 
and we're going to use this square bracket notation to indicate we want to grab one particular element from that list and we're going to pass through n whatever n is at that point so the first time around n is zero so it's going to print out zero then burgers zero position which is beef second time around it's going to be one so then it's going to print out one and burgers one which is chicken and so forth so let's just give this a whirl and we get it right there cool okay so something slightly more advanced now I'm going to just comment this out and again what I'm going to do is say for n in range and this time we're going to pass through a few different arguments and I'm going to show you a little trick here so I'm going to specify a starting point first of all but I want the starting point this time to be at the end this thing right here so how do we do that well what I'm going to say is the starting point is going to be len of burgers which is going to get me the length five and then I'm going to say minus one and that will give me the index of the last item in that list. So if it's five in length, minus one is four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So I'm right here, I'm starting here. Now, why would I wanna start there? Well, because I'm gonna show you how to go backwards through this list. So that's the start position. Where is gonna be the end position? Well, I want the end position to be right over here zero but remember the end position is non-inclusive so if i put zero it's not going to include this so ideally what i want the end position to be is here as well so i can just say minus one for that that's going to go to the last one and finally the step size is going to be minus one as well because we're going to go backwards one each time around okay so now if we print n first of all then burgers n we should go backwards through this list and if we print this out here four double three supreme two veg one chicken zero beef so there we go that's why i like ranges because they can be quite fun working out how to cycle through things in different ways uh, i advise you to play around with these a little bit and just get your head around them before you move on